Hey Gear Seekers, I'm Nick. A couple weeks ago, we checked out the brand new Fantex XT View, and we had a lot of questions about checking out the XT Pro and the XT Pro Ultra. So what I got here today is the XT Pro Ultra. It is a 69 US dollar case with four included 140 mil PWM fans. Sounds like pretty great value, but what we're gonna do is something a little bit different. Typically, we would go through and I'd show you the inner workings of this case, but because it's so similar to the XT View that we checked out a few weeks ago, I'm going to show you what's different with this case compared to the XT View. And there's one other thing. Because this case is relatively cheap, I wanted to do something that we typically don't do that much on the channel. And let's build something a little bit more affordable in this case to see if it's something that you might be interested in. So come along with us as we go and build something a bit cheaper. This video is brought to you by Gigabyte and their powerful and silent Radeon RX 7000 series graphics cards. The Radeon RX 7800 XT Gaming OC 16G features outstanding 1440p and 4K performance in the latest and greatest next-gen gaming titles, while the Radeon RX 7600 XT Gaming OC 16G features class-leading performance in both 1080p and 1440p next-gen gaming titles. The 7800 XT Gaming OC 16G features the Windforce cooling system, which has 390mm fans with the centre fan spinning in the opposite direction and 7 copper heat pipes to help dissipate the heat quickly and efficiently. The Radeon RX 7800 XT and the 7600 XT are both powerful cards that push your gaming experience to the next level at an affordable price. To find out more about Gigabyte and their range of Radeon RX 7000 series graphics cards, click the links in the description. Let's start off with panel removal. This is a full height tempered glass panel. The XC View does not have this. It only goes to about the height of the PSU shard because it's got an open PSU shard. Let's just get that rear panel off. Be careful with this one as well because it is full glass and there's no frame on the bottom, you can smash the panel by mistake. And I've done this a couple times in the past, so yeah, just take my word for it. Next up, the back panel, which is mostly the same as the XT View. Two captive thumb screws and just slide the panel away from the case. The front panel is obviously different because the XT View is glass and this is a mesh front panel and you can mount fans on the front of this case, whereas that's something you can't do on the XT View. But to remove it, you'll notice there's a little Fantex logo down the bottom here. You can just grab the lip and then just give it a yank. Oh, my shoulder's sore. And pull that panel away from the case. On the back of the XT Pro and the Pro Ultra, the main thing you'll notice that's different between this and the view is it doesn't have fan mounts on the side at all because basically what they've done here is they've based it on the same chassis, but this part here, the motherboard tray is different. So you do miss out on that, but it does also support back connector motherboards, which you can see all the cutouts here and around here. The other thing to be aware of is both the XT Pro and the XT View do not support MATX back connector boards. So that's the only back connector board I've got at the moment that I would like to show you guys, but I can't because it just doesn't fit in here. Something else I thought was pretty interesting that was worth mentioning is it still has all of the mounting points for that PSU cover that the XT View has. In fact, it's even got the screw hole here to screw in the TG side panel from that case. So I get it, it's cheaper to make the rest of the frame exactly the same without having to drill new holes and whatnot. And they basically just change the motherboard tray and the front panel and that's it really. One of the most obvious differences you'll probably notice is the XT Pro Ultra. And this is just the Pro Ultra, the Pro doesn't have these, but the Pro Ultra has three included 140 mil PWM fans, which is actually quite interesting because fans like these can get quite expensive. And for the price, I gotta say it right from the jump, that's pretty good value to have three of these up the front, but not only that, there's another 140 at the back as well. So you're getting four included 140 mil fans for 70 US dollars. It's hard to beat that value. Here's where things start to get a little bit weird with the XT Pro and the Pro Ultra compared to the View. First of all, 
standard 360 mil radiator mounting at the top of the case, two 140 mil fans and all that. And that's mainly the same. You can do the three 120s at the bottom as well. But at the front, we've got three 140 mil fans, but the ability to only install a 240 millimeter radiator at the front. I think that's a little bit weird considering we can do three 140s, a little bit of an oversight. What they could have done was something that they did with the P400S and the P400A was have this panel here removable with two screws and then allow you to put a radiator up the front as well. But I also get it because it has 360 mil radiator mounting at the top. They probably didn't think it was as important to have that up the front as well, but still an oversight. Let's say there was someone who had an edge case where they wanted to build a custom water-cooled PC with this case and they wanted to do a bigger radiator up the front. Well, you can't. Storage options are mainly the same with the XT Pro as well. We've got three 2.5 inch bays here on this removable bracket with a captive thumb screw. And you can also do two more down here in the basement or two three and a half inch spinning rush drives there as well. So most of that stuff's the same. It's kind of like I'm repeating myself talking about this, but it really is the same case. It's also, it's also worth mentioning that on the XT Pro, it doesn't have this removable tray for drives on the back. You can only do drives in the basement. So if you're looking to install more two and a half inch SSDs, I would go for the Pro Ultra because instead of just having two drive support, this has got five drive support. For motherboard support, there is one major difference with the XT Pro over the XT View. And that is because this doesn't have the fans on the side, it has additional cutouts for passing cables through for EATX motherboards. This is a very small case that supports EATX motherboards. It also supports the BTF boards from ASUS and Project Zero boards from MSI with the back connectors. I think you're gonna see more back connector motherboards from different manufacturers at Computex this year. So make sure you subscribe to see all that because we'll be heading to Taiwan to check all that stuff out this year. But yeah, I mean, most of the motherboard stuff's the same. Air cooler height support is still 184 mils. GPU support is still about the same, 415 millimeters. You're not really losing anything if you decide to go with the XT Pro over the XT View. Other than the looks, I would say that this is better value because you're getting more fans and Essentially, you're getting better airflow as well. There is one more thing that's different. The XT Pro does not have the RGB strip that runs along the edge of the PSU shroud that the XT View has. Like I said, other than that, I feel like I'm doing the same video again. <laughs> what? That's everything I think you need to know about the Fantex XT Pro Ultra for now. We've already reviewed the XT View as mentioned earlier in the video. There's a link to that review in the description down below just for a couple more of the specifics, but I think I covered most of it here. But as I mentioned, because we're doing a cheaper build in this, I don't have a CPU, so let's go for a drive and go and buy a CPU. All right, off the Scorp Tech we go. <laughs> I love this car so <laughs> Sounds ridiculous. <laughs> right, I guess we should be normal now. There's a couple of CPUs that I was looking at getting. I'm going AMD for this one because to be honest, I don't really have that many AMD CPUs. And one came up that I basically just was searching and I was like, oh, what's the cheapest one, right? Well, what is the cheapest AMD AM5 CPU we can get? And the 8500G popped up, but it's not the CPU we're getting. And it's for a few reasons. First of all, the 8500G, although it is cheap, has quite a few limitations. The first one being that it doesn't have many PCIe lanes. So let's say you were wanting to upgrade your GPU at a later date to something with more than eight PCIe lanes, it's just not gonna work. And that's also because the 8500G only has 
four PCIe lanes it can allocate to your graphics card. It's really designed to be an APU with its own graphics and not really supposed to be used with a graphics card at all, or a discrete one anyway. And I know a lot of people will debate that. I don't care. That's just how it is. That's really why it's not the CPU we're choosing. Now there's other options like the other 8000 series Ryzen chips, but again, they begin to get a bit more expensive than they should be for the type of build that we're trying to do today. So the CPU that I've decided to go for is, you'll have to wait and find out. What? I'm gonna go buy it now. I, I mean, we're in, we're, the, in the car. we're in the car on the way to go buy it. It's very bumpy. It is, it's because I've got the suspension in dynamic. It's, yeah. That's I'm, my fault. I'm not having fun right now. That's okay, I should have put it in comfort. <laughs> Sydney roads don't help. They don't help. Pulling up to Scorpy Boy. It's the wrong Scorpy Boy. What? The wrong Scorpy Boy. It's not at this one. Yeah. The IRL Scorpy Boy is not. Oh no, he's in Japan. Scorpy Boy is in Japan right now. That's why there's lack of memes. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> You're like, where's all the Scorpy memes gone? Well, that's where. Okay. It's a robot. I got a CPU. You're gonna have to wait still. I'm not gonna tell you what it is. All right, we went with the Ryzen 5 7600. It made the most sense financially. These are on sale at the moment. They're like 319 Aussie dollars down from almost 400 Aussie dollars. So Scorp Tech had the cheapest pricing for this at the time of filming this video. 319 for a six core 1200 CPU is actually not bad. So yeah, this is what's going in it. Here's the other thing with the Ryzen 5 7600. It's got an included cooler in the box. However, I don't think this is something that we're gonna be using in this build, but if you wanted to save some cash when you're building a more budget focused system, it is a good way to save maybe 50 bucks if you're, if you're lucky, so yeah. Now we're gonna build.
Alrighty, let's take a look at the thermals of this build. What you see on your screen right now is the thermals are very, very good. If anything, I would say that this scythe cooler is a little bit overkill for this system because it adds a bit of cost to the build, but this cooler is about 45 US dollars as it is, so it's not crazy, but yeah, it, it definitely does add much better thermal performance to this build. The GPU thermals are what really surprised me here. They almost didn't rise from idle. There was only a small delta between full load and being idle, which is crazy to me. I'd say that Fantax has done a decent job with this case. There is one thing to note though. When you do air cool builds like this one here, I would usually recommend not putting exhaust fans on the top of the case. It can impede airflow. Even for my own personal gaming PC, which follows the airflow path of this, has really good thermals and I've got much higher end hardware. So I would say if you wanted top fans for aesthetic purposes, you, you know, do that if you like. It will impede the airflow a tiny bit. It sounds crazy, but it's true because basically what's happening is the air is flowing in a straight line through the case. If you add fans to the top, you're changing the airflow path by 90 degrees, which reduces airflow, it doesn't increase it at all. More exhaust doesn't necessarily mean it's better. Also, these are 140 mil fans and they push a heck of a lot of air. And these fans aren't terrible either. So yeah, there is that. Like I said, 70 US dollars for this case is four big fans and it is pretty decent. If you're interested in any of the hardware, there's a PC part pick list down below in the description. But as usual with these builds, I put little cards on screen as I'm building to show what all the hardware is. This one is a little bit sparse on hardware, if I'm being honest, because the case already had fans, it's an air-cooled build, and when you build PCs like this, you just chuck everything on the motherboard, chuck the motherboard in, power supply, GPU, and you're done. I personally like owning PCs like this because they're very simple and they're not overly complicated. In terms of the Fantex XT Pro Ultra, I would say that the case is fine, but as I mentioned when we did our Thermaltake View 270 video, the build quality of the Thermaltake case is much better than this. And I think I said this in the XT View review as well, that it feels like this should be one of Fantex's metallic gear branded cases because the material quality here is lower than what we would typically see with Fantex cases, but I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to make something cheap with lots of fans in it with great airflow, and they've achieved it. It looks really good, the airflow is good, and you get it, right? It's definitely not a terrible case. I don't really have anything bad to say about this case. I think Fantex has done a pretty good job with it, and they've priced it really, really well. And that's the most appealing thing here. If you're trying to save some cash, especially with specs like this PC here, I think you can save a lot of money in the case department with something like the XT Pro and the XT Pro Ultra. I would almost go as far as saying, don't even bother with the XT Pro, get the Pro Ultra because you know you're getting the fans, right? Something else I thought was worth mentioning was I tallied up the price of a system like this here in Australia and you're looking at around about $1,800, even including these cable extensions, which isn't too bad. And I would say that would be somewhere in the vicinity of between $1,000 and 1200 US dollars, which again, in the world that we live in, is not terrible value for a system like this. In terms of gaming performance, I haven't tested it. This is the kind of PC that you would build to get yourself into PC gaming. Games like Warzone and stuff like that at medium settings, this thing's gonna run it. Fortnite, this is gonna run it. Counter-Strike, this will do it no problem. So a lot of those games are the games that people wanna play on PC transitioning from console, yeah. Just a bit of food for thought. One of the other things with a PC build like this one here is you can save money changing a couple things. First of all, you don't need to have a one terabyte SSD if you're building it for this purpose. What you can do is get a 500 gig drive for booting Windows and then maybe a mechanical drive later because most of the time 500 gigs is gonna be enough for one or two AAA games. You can also save money by not getting this cooler. You can use the box cooler with the 7600, which is gonna be fine. And then you can upgrade it later 
if you want to do a little bit of light overclocking and that kind of stuff as well. The RAM, you can get much cheaper RAM. This is RGB RAM for the sake of being RGB RAM. I don't have anything on hand that is lower tier than this. So you can go non-RGB RAM. DDR5, again, guys, is not that expensive now. In fact, normal DDR5 kits are 32 gigs in capacity, and they're about the same price as DDR4 with a 16 gig kit. So the pricing for memory has significantly dropped over the last year. Also, you don't need cable extensions. I don't know if I mentioned that. You just don't need them. They're purely to look good when I shoot B-roll and Claire shoots photos for Instagram and for the B-roll section. That's the reason why we do it because it's got to catch your eye somehow, right? Also, the power supply in this system is an 850 watt power supply. You don't need 850 watts for this. You could probably get away with a 650 and you'd be just fine. So there are heaps of little places that you can save money with PCs like this. But as, as I said, like the price for something like this with these specs, like these exact specs is going to be around 1800 Aussie dollars. So yeah. Again, not terrible value, but a lot of unnecessary stuff in here. I really made this to give you guys an understanding of what to focus on and what not to really care about. We do a lot of these kind of builds and it's something that we take into consideration when we build PCs on the channel, but a lot of the time when we're reviewing cases, we put expensive hot hardware in because you know if you're gonna get anything at a lower tier, the thermal performance is either gonna be really good or really bad. That's the only reason why we do it this way. As well as that, the reason why I didn't add fans and kept the stock fans is I wanted to know what the thermals would be like if we didn't add any fans. Plus it makes it easier for me to build it that way too. All right, I guess you've had enough of me yabbering for however long this video has gone for. Hope you enjoyed coming shopping with us, even though Claire accidentally shot that footage in 1080p on her iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. Okay. I, I mean, the second bit was in 4K. It's funny because we were talking about it before we left. You're like, oh yeah, I've got to switch it to 4K. Because I mean, the iPhone 15 Pro Max is dumb. You can tell the phone to record in whatever quality and resolution you had as the last time when you open it up again, but it just doesn't work. I'm sorry, I didn't, get, I didn't care what you say. It just doesn't work. But even at 1080p, the footage looks fine, right? Who cares? Who cares? Just a video, something fun for you guys. If you like the music you heard here, that's also pretty fun. You can click the join button to take a listen to it. I make all the music. That's where it comes from. It's me. I'm not sure what music we're going to be using today, but it's definitely going to be something. And if you want to get early access to videos kind of like this, this one will probably go up on Floatplane early, if I'm being honest. Check out a link to our Floatplane in the description down below. Also, shout out to Gigabyte for sponsoring this video. There's links to the stuff from the ad that ran on this video, I suppose, in the description. Yeah. Uh, I'm out of here. I'm your boy Nick with Gear Seekers. Blah, blah, blah. Computers, computers, computers. Are you being a cat? Are you being a cat? Bindi? Little cat parade. You just bonked your head on the wall. You're bonking your head everywhere. You're a crazy cat.